Hi everybody. Uh, today's topic is right ventricular outflow tract obstruction with intact ventricular septum. Door and level. Pulmonary stenosis and pulmonary atresia with uh, intact ventricular septum are classically described as two separate entities. However, there is a consensus that in the neonatal period, critical pulmonary stenosis and pulmonary atresia often have a similar critical uh, clinical presentation and hearts with uh, pinhole pulmonary stenosis may indeed exhibit the anatomical features of right ventricular hypertrophy and cavity hypoplasia commonly seen in uh, pulmonary atresia with intact ventricular septum. Right ventricular outflow tract abstraction without right ventricular hypertrophy is also included. Anat anatomical substrate Pulmonary valve In pulmonary atresia, the pulmonary valve is replaced by an uh, imperforate uh, fibrous membrane. In some cases, prominent commissural ridges converge and meet at the center of the imperforate valve. This is the form of imperforate valve observed in patients with severe infundibular stenosis or atresia. The other type of imperforate valve is characterized by commissural ridges present only at the periphery of the valve and the center being a smooth fibrous membrane having the potential to bulge into the pulmonary trunk. This type of valve is usually associated with a lesser degree of right ventricular uh, hypoplasy and with an open infundibulum. In severe pulmonary stenosis, there is chemistrial fusion at the periphery of the valve. Centrally, there is a smooth fibrous dome with an orifice uh, that is usually central but sometimes eccentric. In less severe forms, two, three or sometimes four leaflets are relatively well performed with only partial chemistrial fusion. The valve is usually thickened and may have a uh, myxomatous appearance, particularly in neonates and some infants. Pulmonary stenosis due to a mucoid thickening of the valve leaflets without commissural fusion is known as pulmonary valvular dysplasia. The valve ring may or may not be hypoplastic. Hypoplastic ring uh, is often seen in the Noonan syndrome. Pulmonary arteries. A good sized main pulmonary artery with confluent branches is the usual situation in pulmonary atresia with intact ventricular septum. Beyond infancy, post-stenotic dilatation of the main and proximal left uh, pulmonary arteries is a common finding in patients with pulmonary stenosis. Stenosis of pulmonary arterial branches can occur in isolation or in association with other cardiac malformations. This can be central or peripheral, discrete or tubular, single or multiple. Multiple peripheral pulmonary stenosis are often a part of the rubella syndrome. Right ventricle and tricuspid valve. In pulmonary atresia with intact ventricular septum, right ventricular cavity size is variable with different degrees of myocardial hypertrophy and uh, tricuspid valve anomalies. Most patients have both right ventricular hypoplasia and hypertrophy, both of which may be severe. In these hearts, the size of the tricuspid valve anomalies has been found to relate to the degree of cavity hypoplasia. In addition, the tricuspid valve uh, leaflets are often thickened and horda are abnormal in number and attachments. At the other end of the spectrum are those hearts with greatly enlarged right ventricular cavities and the regurgitant uh, regurg regurg dysplastic uh, tricuspid valve with or without displacement Epstein anomaly. In this rare anomaly, the right ventricle wall is usually thinned and on occasion may be devoid of myocardium Achilles anomaly and pulmonary atresia. In valvular pulmonary stenosis, the obstruction produces concentric hypertrophy of the right ventricle, which may result in secondary infundibular stenosis. This is usually a mild to moderate uh, reduction in right ventricular cavity size, which is partly related to the concentric ventricular hypertrophy. 
Severe right ventricular hypoplasia or enlargement is rare. Isolated subvalvar pulmonary stenosis produced by a large anomalous muscle bands account for 10 to 20 percent of patients with pulmonary stenosis and intact ventricular septum. Right atrium. An atrial communication is present in all cases of the uh, of pulmonary atresia with intact uh, ventricular septum and in most neonates with critical pulmonary stenosis. The communication is restricted in about 5 to 10 percent of neonates with pulmonary atresia with intact ventricular septum. Coronary arteries. A substantial number of patients with pulmonary atresia with intact ventricular septum and diminutive and hypertensive right ventricle have persistence of right ventricle myocardial sinusoidal coronary artery connections. The fistulas uh, communications can uh, connect the uh, hypertensive right ventricle to one or both coronary arteries. Connection to the left anterior descending coronary artery is the commonest. Sometimes the proximal connection between the uh, coronary artery and the aorta is absent and perfusion of involved coronary circulation is retrograde from the right ventricle and is dependent on right ventricle hypertension, right ventricle dependent coronary circulation. Intimal fibromuscular hyperplasia often occurs in the coronary arteries linked with the sinusoids and may be responsible for myocardial ischemia and infarction involving either the right or the left ventricle or both. Principles of management In recent years, a more aggressive approach towards uh, early relief of right ventricle outflow, uh, outflow obstruction was adopted. The aim is to provide uh, pulmonary forward flow and stimulate right ventricle growth and enable the right ventricle to serve the pulmonary circulation whenever possible. In addition, there is good evidence that left ventricle function can be compromised by the presence of a hypertrophied, hypertensive right ventricle. We feel that right ventricle decompression should be considered even if the right ventricle is too small to be incorporated later into a uh, biventricular circulation. However, the right ventricle should not be decompressed in the presence of a right ventricle depend, uh, dependent coronary circulation. Under these circumstances, the high pressure right ventricle perfuses portions of the right and left ventricle myocardium with desaturated blood in systole. During diastole, the uh, lower right ventricle diastolic pressure may allow a steal of blood from the coronary arteries into the right ventricle to the detriment of coronary uh, circulation. Furthermore, the coronary circulation may be right ventricle dependent in the case of a proximal discontinuity between one or both coronary arteries and the aorta and or in the case of peripheral stenosis caused by intimal hyperplasia. The compression of such ventricles may result in myocardial ischemia and or infarction in the distribution of the involved coronary arteries. The decision between univentricular and biventricular repair depends on the morphological characteristics of the right ventricle, in particular the size of the right ventricle cavity and the presence or absence of uh, coronary artery fistula. The adequacy of the hypoplastic right ventricle for biventricular repair is difficult to assess and uh, different methods have been used. In patients with pulmonary atresia and intact ventricle septum, we have found it useful to classify the hypoplastic hypo hypertrophic right ventricles into three categories on the basis of the tripartite concept of the right ventricle. The hearts will all three uh, components present, those with the absence of the trapecular portion and those with an uh, inlet zone only. only. In these hearts, the size of the trick split valve angles was found to relate to the degree of cavity obliteration. Our studies have suggested that a right ventricle whose trick split valve diameter is within 99% uh, three standard deviations of mean normal is capable of providing adequate pulmonary blood flow and of being incorporated uh, into a biventricular circulation. Our initial measurements of the trick split valve diameter were made on angiograms. Currently, they are made on uh, two-dimensional echocardiograms. Table 28.1 gives the mean normal values for a given body weight and their lower 
uh, confidence limits. The mean normals were derived from the study.